Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Anders Mill Knits podcast. I'm your host, Emily, and welcome to my home. I'm so glad that you were all able to make it here today. I want to thank you, all the returning viewers and all of the new viewers, for uh, tuning in, uh, and especially everyone who has subscribed. Thank you. If you like it, uh, if you like the video, please go ahead and push the like button and the subscribe button down below on YouTube. And if you're watching from iTunes, please leave an iTunes review. That would be very helpful to get us up in the ratings or something like that in iTunes. It's been a while since I've used iTunes, so you know. But uh, it's a wonderful day here in the neighborhood, as Mr. Rogers says. A beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor, would you be mine? That was it. <laughs> I have that on my head because when I was home, my little niece was watching it one night. Uh, I am back and I wanna thank you all for tuning in to the last very short episode on travel knitting. Um, yeah, I had less than half an hour to record it and, less, and I didn't have any time to edit. So I just, I just had to upload it as is and I was just like, fingers crossed, because my parents have horrible internet in their house, so I knew I wasn't going to be able to upload the episode at my parents' house, so I needed to do it before I got on the plane to Alaska. So, they also have horrible cell phone service, all kinds of stuff, it's... and it's not like they live in the boonies, either, in Anchorage, but... Um, I'm going to try things a little bit differently this time around. Uh, first off, I have no show notes again because, uh, I just wanted to podcast when I felt like it this week. And so that's the way it's going to be. I know I do better with show notes than without, but you know what? We're just going to try. <laughs> and the other thing is, is I'm going to wait and do my, so normally I do my reviewing notes at the beginning, which is where I let, tell you all about the personal stuff. Uh, but I decided let's try things differently. Let's try putting it at the end. Um, and then let's do the knitting content at the beginning, okay? So the very first thing is administrative things uh, for the knitting podcasts. We The signups for the 24 Days of Cheer have closed. I've been, sorry, I'm going to reach over here. I've been working on the, creating the, uh, I've been color coding and working on creating the partners for the 24 days of cheer and I hope to have that done by this evening which is Saturday by the way the 16th um, and have it out to everybody so if you're looking for for that hopefully to just keep an eye out on your Ravelry inbox I'm thinking that's how I'm gonna let it let everybody know I might email everybody I'm not sure and uh, you know, we have a lot of great podcasters who are joining in with us, and it's just amazing. I finally had an The other thing is, is um, the Summer Stripe Along CAL has come to a close, and Giddy Knits was so um, awesome. She picked all the people for us for, with using Random Number Generator uh, for the prizes, and so she and she has posted that in the Super Summer Oh, I'm sorry, the Summer Stripe Along Cow group. So if you think you could be a winner, go over there. And she's made a sticky note right at the top and check it out. I've already received quite a few people who, I think I've got almost all of them, who have received prizes. They went out in the mail yesterday, except for one that I think is going out today because I had to contact the, um, the, uh, the maker so they could send it out. So I'm finally up to date on all of that. That was weighing heavily on my mind and I wanted to thank you all for being so patient and lovely with me while I was up in Alaska uh, working um, through my grandmother's death uh, with my family. Uh, that was really kind of you guys. I was, it was really, I wasn't really in a headspace to do anything on social media and so it was really difficult for me to even check Ravelry if that makes sense. And so anyway. I was I just really want to thank you guys for bearing with me on that so that's the admitted oh and finally the last little thing is the double double dip cow it's still going on what I have decided to do is since we're halfway through September already I'm just gonna make the August prize the September prize as well so just keep on 
that's that that at thread is still active so just keep on posting in there and I think I'm going to do that for the rest of the year because you know I do this all out of the goodness of my heart it's all coming from my stash and I have to flip the bill for the mailing as well and it does get rather expensive like I just dropped about $50 on postage yesterday and you know I'm tr we're trying to pay down the bills and so you know I'm just I'm like okay something's got to give so what I've decided is is now the uh, double dip cow is going to one prize for two months if that makes sense so I feel like my voice is off on the recording but it could just be because I have super bright red lipstick on today I got a clearance lipstick yesterday at Ulta and I decided to put it on this morning and it was ha ha hello there and this is me trying to wipe it off so this isn't even as bright as it was this is after a couple hours and of me going I'm, 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 trying to get it off <laughs> but my husband thinks it's super sexy so you know I'm gonna keep it hmm. <laughs> He didn't think it was sexy when I kissed him on the cheek and he had to go and scrub for like five minutes to get the lipstick off. <laughs> but anyway, why don't we just go ahead and get into some reviewing notes. Uh, not reviewing notes, I'm sorry. I'm still in that my normal headspace of my podcast. So case notes, guess what? I have none! <laughs> but I, what I do have is some things from my grandmother that I made her over the years. And... Ironically, I was going to make my grandmother some socks for Christmas this year. <sighs> anyway, this is the first thing I ever made my grandmother. It is a scarf, and we all know that I hate knitting scarves, but my grandmother loves scarves, so I made her this. And it's just, I don't remember what the pattern is. It could be on my Ravelry page. Um, but it's, it's this, it's a really rustic wool and you can tell, my, I know my grandma wore this a lot because I saw her wearing it every winter for years. But there's some spots on here that are kind of felted together. I don't remember where it is now. It's just, you know. But anyway, and so, but it's held up really well. The, the edge isn't very stretchy, but in here it's pretty darn stretchy. So it's a really awesome look. My grandmother just absolutely loved it. And uh, so she didn't wrap it around her neck because it would have been too scratchy. She just wore it around her, on her, um, uh, underneath her coat collar. And that's how she wore it every day during the winter time. And it still smells like her. So that's lovely. So I'm happy to have that. Another one that I made for my grandmother uh, quite a few years ago. I don't know, maybe even... I don't know when this first came out on Ravelry and that is the um, steampunk no 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 yeah I think it's the steampunk shawl yeah something like that it's a free shawl on Ravelry and I just need used a Nora Noro skein because I liked the gradients and it really brought out the color in my grandmother's cheeks it was really beautiful on her and she usually just wore this around like this you know, and especially when she was playing the piano for church and things like that. She just wore it like that. So she loved that. And the last thing that I made her that I found anyway, I know I've made her a couple other things, but I couldn't find them in her house um, after the funeral when we were going through it, is this cowl that I admit I used the wrong yarn on. I think this was some, it was a, it's a silk blend or silk bamboo blend. And I think it's from Cascade. And it, this is just a cowl. It's very lacy. And um, Grandma loved it. The only problem is, is that when you put it on, you don't see any of the lace because, yeah, it just folds over like that. Folds in half. So you don't see any of the lace. But it's gorgeous. Mmm. And that smells like Grandma, too. Yeah. So these were my finished objects from Grandma. Nay. I my Grandma was not only eminently knit worthy, she was always just so proud of my hand knits, you know? 
I miss her. Anyway. So those are my case notes. I mean, there's not, there's not much detail I can tell you about them because all of those things were knit quite a while ago. So, you know, but so we'll have to go into what's in session today. So I have been knitting pretty monogamously on my travel, my last podcast episode. I was telling you about all these projects I was going to knit on when I was home. And honestly, I really only knit on two things the whole time I was gone. Well, no, I guess three things because I, oh, hold on. Back to case notes. I totally just lied to you. I have something done. Oh my goodness. Uh, I just don't have it here to show you, so I totally forgot about it. So my super slouchy hat by Cat Mountain Fibers. I have this done, and I actually gave it to my best friend on our last evening together up uh, back home. We went to our favorite restaurant, which is, are you ready for it? Chinese Pizza and Tea Garden. And yes, they cook both Chinese food and pizza, and both are to die for. I don't like pizza, but I like their pizza. And, um, but their Chinese food is the best I have, well, it's Chinese American. Let's just be honest, okay? But it's the best I've ever had. Um, nobody I have ever gone to has made almond chicken the way these guys do. They use this really lovely brown almondy uh, gravy over the top of it that's just, oh, it's my best friend's favorite. And my favorite uh, is uh, sweet and sour chicken. And I've been going to that restaurant since I was probably like two, maybe even when I was born. It used to be my parents' favorite restaurant, and then they got sensitive to the grease or something like that. I don't know, but now my mom can't eat there <laughs> very often. But we still go, and the family still remembers me. I watched the kids grow up, and now they've graduated college, and they don't want to take over the family business, and grandma's still, their grandma's still running it, but... She remembers me, but the problem is is she couldn't remember my name. And so she's starting to lose some of her memory and stuff, or her cognition. And it was just so cute because she kept on forgetting um, if she had given us, like, our egg flour soup or <laughs> what we had ordered. So she just kept on coming back to our table and was like, did I take your order? And we're like, yeah, you did. So <laughs> it was just so fun. Anyway, so I gave that to her that night. I didn't take a picture of Tasha in this. Um... I took a picture of myself right before I went to go see her. I literally finished this hat about 10 minutes before I went to go meet her for dinner. So I didn't have time to block it. I barely had time to weave in the ends. I didn't even cut the ends. So my best friend is going to do cut the ends and that kind of thing. She's a knitter and a crocheter. She knows how to do these things. But it doesn't even need to be blocked. But it does look very Rastafarian, I will say. So I'll insert a picture somewhere, like here, somewhere. Maybe over here. I. It's been so long since I've edited things that I don't know where I'm gonna put it. So, but I'll show. I'll have some pictures in there of me, and I used the um, Cat Mountain Fiber um, Fusion skein, and it has all of these fibers in it. So we've got bamboo uh, blend, wool blend. Um, mohair, buble, what am I missing here? There's sparkle, or there's Delina, and then there's just 100% blue face luster. So there's all kinds, and I've got enough left over that I could actually knit one of my nieces a hat. And I think that I've got like two or three nieces that I think would really love these colors. So I'm probably going to do that for them because I don't know what else I would do for them. I mean, I guess I could scan them up and put them in the um 24 days of cheer that's another idea too um so that is my finished object now on to in session like i said i really only knit on two things this entire time and really honestly if i'm being truly honest i really devoted myself to one thing only and that is my veronica sweater that was gifted to me a few weeks ago or was it even just last? No, it was the week before last. And it's this beautiful, um, it's not something I ever would have thought to knit for myself, but you know, I'm really excited about it. Cause you know, it's like a blanket. It's a shawl. It's a sweater. It's a schlanket. 
you know? Sweater. So how would I put in sweater? Schlinketer. Schlinketer. It's a schlinketer. <laughs> sure. Um, I am loving, loving, loving this knit. And I'm knitting it out of my um, Dragonfly Fibers in the worsted weight within the mushroom hunting colorway. And how far have I gotten? Well, oh, hold on, I'm sitting on some of the yarn. Okay, here we go. So here, it's knit from sleeve to shining sleeve. <laughs> from sleeve to shine. I don't know the tune all of a sudden. And so here's all the back getting up there and then here we go. Okay, so that's where I started, the first sleeve, okay? And then you have to cast on some for the back. And I knit all of the black back ridges and I now have just barely cast off the back. And I'm working on the other sleeve. So I'm probably about 75% done because let's see, I have the other sleeve to knit and then after that, Okay, so I do the ribbing, and then what do I do? No, that's the... Then I have to do the back ribbing. So I believe I have to pick up... You'll pick up stitches along the slipped edge of the back section. Section. So I still have to do the ribbing. I hope this makes sense. Okay, so here is... So we've got this knitted rib right here. Um, this. So this is the shawl collar area, right? Okay, and that goes all the way down. Okay, so that's the front. Actually, I'll just put it on if I can't. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I'm doing it backwards. Okay. So here's my... Sh okay, we have to put this down some, guys. Okay. So here's my shawl collar-esque type thing. Here's my one sleeve that will be going like this. And then over here, uh, this is the other sleeve. But then I'll be picking up stitches. Uh-oh, and I'm losing stitches. Oh, no, I'm not. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm picking up stitches along the bottom, slipped edge, and knitting along the back to bring it all together. And that'll give me the ribbing, as you can see, right there. That's the bottom ribbing. See, that's the shawl collar. <gasps> Excuse me. So, that's what I'm going to be working on. And this is just... How do I explain this? This is like um, comfort knitting at its best, like Zen knitting. There's only, I mean, you have the mindless, I'm trying to find where I'm working. Okay, so you have the mindless knit one pearl one ribbon going on here, which is for some reason it ridiculously squishy. Like, I'm, why is this? feel so much more squishy than it normally feels, you know, when I do ribbing. Maybe it's because I'm working on worsted weight, not fingering weight. <laughs> and then we have just, uh, we have just one row in which is different. And so, and you, it's so easy to read your knitting on this that I always know where I am. And I figured out a formula for the back, so I didn't have to measure anything. I just uh, remembered my formula and kept on knitting and it just it's worked out perfectly on my my um my measurements when I measured it after I cast off the back perfect um the exact measurements that it says in the pattern I'm just super excited about this I want to have this done by the end of September and I feel like I'm going to have it done by the next week so hopefully I'll have this as a finished object I say these things and then I feel like I set myself up for failure. But I'm going to work on this, continue to work on this monogamously um, because I just absolutely love it and want it. And the reason why I need to get this done is there's another um, sweater that was gifted to me and it's a knit along. And but it's but it's a knit along in which you know what you're getting at the end. So it's not it's not a mystery knit along, um, and, but it is only going to be released in sections starting the first week in October. 
and I'm super excited about that. Um, I think I know what yarn I'm going to be using. I've got my Knit Picks um, Cashmere S yarn. I can't, I can't remember what it's called. I'm horrible at this. But it's also in brown, ironically. I don't know what's with me in brown right now. But, but you know, I knit a lot of sweater. Um, I, you know, the thing is is I got really excited about my breathing space sweater. It doesn't fit me exactly right, but I still love how it fits me and I feel great wearing it. And that's the first time I felt that way about a sweater that I've knit for myself. And that's gotten me really excited to continue knitting uh, sweaters. And this Veronica sweater is a kind of sweater that I don't have to worry about it fitting me perfectly in the bust or where it hangs on me as far as length. And because that's just not the kind of sweater this is. This is a wrap yourself up when it's cold outside kind of sweater. And I bet you all my clients are gonna love it too when they see me. Are you wearing a blanket to see us today? That's what they're gonna ask me. <laughs> and I'm gonna reply, yeah, well, yes, indeed I am. I'm wearing a blanket because it's cold outside and I want to, so there. Sorry, Watson and I just got back from an hour walk and I am always ridiculously thirsty after my walks. Okay, so the next thing that I knit on while I was gone are my mindless socks. Um, you saw the finished, whoa, I'm in the middle of a row. Nice one. Okay, I'm just gonna keep talking to you guys while I finish this row. So we're not gonna be all wackadoo. So you guys saw the um, ha half finished object the last time I recorded and this is in the, oh shoot fire, the Kirby Werby's uh, Granny Bell colorway. And you know what, I said last time that I was really confused because it says that it's a sparkle base and I don't see any sparkle. And that is true, I don't see any sparkle in the actual knitted fabric, however, when I look at the strand on its own, there are tiny, tiny little flecks of sparkle every great now and then. Great now and then. Hardly at all. So, um, so I guess it is a sparkle base. I would conservatively, or no, I would generously say that it's got like a 5% sparkle in it. Generously. I might even just say a 2%. Yeah, I see I see one little piece of sparkle, just one. But, you know, understatement. So, that's what she's going for. So, I have knit the cuff to six and a half inches. No, six inches. And then uh, I did a half an inch of plain stocking knit on the back. But to, and I increased by two stitches. I found that if I do that before I do the... Um, Oh, shoot. Fish Lips Kiss Heel, that it fits my my heel a lot better. So I increased by two stitches on the back and did the heel. And then, and then I just, oh yeah, and then it's just stocking that stitch to the end. So I did the heel and this while in the airport to get home on Wednesday. So, and it's looking pretty much the exact same as my other sock. They're going to be fraternal twins. So, it's pooling the same. Somebody was saying that this is like a micro pool. I mean, a mi not a micro pool, a micro stripe. I, I still want to say it's intentional pooling. So, I'm knitting that on a size zero needles. And somewhere along the way, when I was in, that's the one. I don't know if you can see it. You won't be able to see it. But I, right here... I accidentally, somehow, on the plane, I bent it. And so, I actually bent it back. That was a little wonky. These are, these needles are super, like, easy to bend. I didn't realize it until I had to intentionally bend it back. But, there you go. So, um, it's, the needle's not perfectly straight anymore. But it doesn't matter. I still love them. They're my Addy tur Turbos, I want to say. US size zeros. And in my something bag. 
I don't know who was by anymore because the tag came off. And yeah, I still have the rope from the tag. I don't know what my problem is. I don't know if I'm lazy or I just like things messy. I don't know. Because I just never, ever, ever seem to um, get rid of the tags and stuff. But I also like to know who, where, who made things, where it's from, and things like that. Because I have a tendency to forget. It's not a good thing, you know? I want to show off my mug. I love this thing. Hydro flasks are the best thing ever. They keep everything cool or hot, depending on what you like. And for the entire day, I never have to worry about it. I do a lot of times still put ice in my hydro flask for my water, but at the same time, it really doesn't need it. It's crazy. All right. So, um, what have I got in my toolbox this time around? So, I have a lot of things that I have from my grandma that I brought back with me. A whole separate suitcase and then some. But I'm not going to get into all of that. I showed you what I made her over the years. And so I think we'll leave it at that for now at least. Um, and then, but as far as yarny goodness, before I went out of town... Um, I got my first yarn box subscription for my birthday that my parents got me. And inside, I don't think I've talked about this, have I? Oh, we're going to pretend I haven't. <laughs> and inside, I got three skeins. Three. And they are, I've never heard of this company. In, if you have, let me know. It's Alta Truth. And this is a 80% merino wool and 20% baby alpaca. It's a DK weight. There are 298 yards or 273 millimeters. And um, they say they need it between a 5.5 and a US 7. And I have three skeins of this. So let's see, we have 298. So let's put that to three. So I've got a little less than 900 yards here. That's a fair amount. No, I don't know what I'm going to knit with it. <laughs> um, my mom asked me that too. And um, I don't know. I really don't. I'm super excited about it. And then it came with, um, I guess you can get a free crochet pattern and then also a free knit pattern, but it comes in your email. And I know my mom and dad got this for my birthday, so they probably got the pattern in their email box. But it's a pretty simple, but pretty shawl pattern. And then it just tells you about if you've missed past months, you can you can order the up from the yarn box overstock store. So that's what I got in my yarn box this last time. So that was really nice. Thanks, mom. <laughs> Then, when I was home, we went to a new-to-me yarn store. I visited my old yarn store for Knit Night. Hi, Terry. Hi, Annie. Hi, Jen. And everybody else who was there. I'm sorry, I forgot everybody's names. But you guys are awesome. It was wonderful. But we, didn't, we did visit a new-to-me yarn store, which is called Southside Knitting Nook. And ironically, <sighs> okay, sorry, now that, that made me look really fat sitting like that. <laughs> so, um, my house that I have back home, I'm, I'm renting it out right now, it's only about a quarter of a mile as the crow flies walking to this knit shop. So if I ever move home, I can go there and just knit 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 to my heart's content so i have a rule every time i visit a new yarn shop i have to buy something thereafter when i visit your yarn shop if i don't like anything and i don't want anything i don't feel obligated to buy anything i've already met my obligation <laughs> so that's what i do this yarn store was huge in shopel 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 the german yarn company and I got myself two skeins. Now they're the same colorway. It's just they were skeined differently. You can see the green, the acid green there. And then you can see the pink in here. 
So they were skeined differently, so you can see all of the colorways right here. And this is the Edition 6, and um, it's, it's a very light fingering. I would even call it a lace weight. It's a two-ply, and let's see, in one ball, there's 50 grams or 300 meters. Um, and so I got two of these, and I figure I'm going to knit a shawl. Uh, an interesting self-striping shawl. I figure I'm going to actually probably knit something on the bias, you know, where you start out with a little bit and you get bigger, 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 bigger. So there's quite a few out there that I think would fit perfectly with this. So I'm going to do that. Um, then my good friend Terry at our knit night at, back at the yarn store back home, Far North and Knitting Company, who, you know, I I just love you guys so much. Annie, um, you guys are amazing. In fact, you're so amazing that I just can't handle it, and I might just have to... Okay, <laughs> you're probably all wondering what the heck that was. Um, <clears throat> we were joking around at knit night and Annie, <laughs> Annie said that she would love to see me faint one time on the show and pan to a fire burning or something <laughs> like that. So it was super cold at my parents' house, so I had a fire going pretty much every single day. So I pre-recorded the fire crackling. And, you know, actually this was very just in the moment. I didn't even plan this, the whole fainting thing. But, you know, I had to do it for you, Annie. Wink, wink. Man, I'm bad at winking. <laughs> but there you go, Annie. There's, there's your fainting spell. And, okay, all right, a little background on this. So you might all know that I kind of have a different way of talking. I oftentimes speak in um, 19th century verbiage, uh, or then I also use my counseling verbiage as well, vocabulary. And uh, so like, <laughs> we were talking about something. I don't even remember what we were talking about. And I happened to say, I only do something when I retire for the evening. And they all just started laughing uproariously. They're like, so you retire for the evening. You don't go to bed, but you read Watson. You retire for the evening. And I was like, yes, okay, yes I do. So they started making, uh, teasing me, not making fun, because it was all in good fun and I was having a great time with it. And that's when Annie goes, you need a fainting couch. And so we needed to do the fainting bit. <laughs> so there you go. But Terry, anyway, back to Terry, who's the important one here. I love you, Terry. Um, she painted this beautiful mug with cables, um, garter stitch, and ribbing. See the ribbing? Hi, Watson. You're just going to have your butt to everybody? Yeah, he doesn't care. So she painted this beautiful mug for me. I love it so much. And along with that, she gave me this oh, gorgeous skein of um, Evil Little Goat, who I've never bought from. I've heard of quite a lot, and I follow her on Instagram, but I've never bought anything from her. But it's a beautiful skein. It's uh, the Soft Goat Base. It's 100% Superwash Merino, Merino Wool, 2-ply fingering weight, 100 grams, 400 yards. And this is in the sale colorway. Oh, Terry, I just noticed that. You probably had no idea, uh, or, but you know how I love to um, quote what about, about Bob. I'm sailing! <laughs> out on the wave, out on the sea with the waves and everything. Ahoy! I never get that quote right, but it's one of my favorites. Thanks, Terry. This isn't what going in my... Um, Precious skeins. Um, <laughs> this is super silly. Uh, so I do a lot of um, 
secondhand shopping and I'm always looking in the craft section of Goodwill and I happened to come across this <laughs> Hollywood crochet dolls yeah that's Audrey Hepburn and then who else is in here uh, Elvis that's actually brought the reason why I bought it Elvis hello and it's got all the patterns for all of them in here. And I believe they're all based off of a, oh, there's Marilyn Monroe. Sorry, I'm seeing it backwards, so that's why I'm having a hard time. Uh, there's James Bond, Kate Winslet, Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, I get it. I've never seen uh, Titanic, so I didn't get this at first. So this must be the Titanic one, am I thinking? Kate Winslet and Leonardo, am I right? I think so. And then let's see who else they got. Well, I guess that's it. Oh, yeah, because there's James Bond over here. So James Bond, Marilyn Monroe, Audrey Hepburn, Elvis, Kate Winslet, and Leonardo DiCaprio. So it's all the same, and it get, shows you how to do it all. <laughs> there's Elvis. Elvis. Oh. oh my gosh, look at him. Oh. I'm so excited about this. Oh, and look at Audrey. Breakfast, breakfast at Tiffany's, anyone? Which is actually my least favorite of her shows, but whatever. And then Marilyn. I just love it. So. <laughs> Not only did it come with a hook, but it came with an extremely cheap crochet hook and all of the yarn and... Watson! No. And thread of crochet. What is it called? Embroidery thread for the eyes. I'm sorry, I'm so distracted because of Watson. So it came with it all. Actually, it didn't. Because there's no brown on here for Audrey. Huh, it didn't come with it all. It didn't come with any blue for Kate Winslet. So I guess I can do Elvis. I know I can do Elvis. And I can do James Bond. That's what I can do with this. But for, <clears throat> get this guys. 50 cents. That's what I spent on this. I'm quite pleased with that. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or send it to my nieces or something, but that's what I have. So then when I was home, we went to the uh, Alaska State Fair and I have lots of pictures in it. Don't worry, you're going to see pictures at the end. But we went to the Quilting Guild's booth and there was a... There was this there, and this is a um, little lap blanket slash tapestry-esque kind of um, quilt that was made by a 12-year-old, and I love it. There are so many things wrong with it, but at the same time, this is like genius. So the girl took all kinds of little scraps of all different fabrics and lace. You put lace on it and Emily's a goner, okay? And that's what she made. And then she even did applique. There's two hearts on it. She did these beautiful little bows with, I um, mean, not bows, flowers with buttons in the middle. Oh, my freaking gosh. Um, I just loved it. I had to get it. And I even tried to get them to let me pay more for it because it was made by a 12 year old, you know? I felt, but anyway, I'm actually going to try and do something like this. I'm probably at the same skill set as this 12 year old when it comes to sewing. So, you know, I could do this, but I love this idea of taking all these scraps and just putting on all this lace and just having fun with it instead of always worrying that everything just lines up perfectly. <sighs> it's so hard. So those were my acquisitions in my toolbox, but I have something super special I want to share with you guys from my niece, actually. Um, so my little niece, Miriam, she's not so little, she's 14, <laughs> but 
but she's always been very um, crafty like her mother and she has always just been very good with her hands. I'm sorry, I'm trying to not make this look all wonka do because it's been smushed in the uh, bag for so long. So she is starting a new business. Um, she has these grand dreams, and I can completely see them happening, of going to Paris for college for couture, um, dressmaking, design, um, everything. And she's well on her way. So she makes these beautiful dolls, and some are, some are human-esque, like this one. And some are mermaids. I have to admit, Miriam, my favorite are the mermaids. <laughs> but this is so cute. Look what she does. She, and everything is upcycled, okay? So everything, uh, except for the felt, everything she uses on these dolls are all upcycled. So this, um, this lace she made, and she designs everything. So she designed, um the dress oh oh here we go she designed the dress i'm putting my face over your eyes i mean my hand over your eyes and she just you know she just uses things from around the house Her, my my sister amy is a big um goodwills i'm not goodwill she doesn't like she goes uh garage selling thank you i Thank you, Emily. You finally figured out the word. So she goes garage selling a lot and she picks up these things and, and Miriam makes things. And I, I think I'm getting this right, Miriam. So she makes them all secondhand. Now this doll, I mean, look at these tiny little buttons. Can you believe how intricate all of this is? Look at the shoes she designed and made. I mean, and oh, so, okay. Let's see if I can take the coat off. You guys got to see her without the coat because it's super adorable. Okay, here she is without the coat. And do you see what she did? She made gloves. Everything's removable. She made gloves with the lace on it as well. So see. Look at the hands. She's even got a thumb. I mean... How astounding. And I love her little smirk. Her little smile just a tiny bit off kilter. And she uses all these beads. I'd given her a lot of beads and um, goodies when I left. And so she said she's been using those a lot. And um, so this one, she, and she makes these beautiful little handmade tags to go with each doll. And this one says, hello, my name is uh, Myra, and which means quiet song. And this is handmade by Miriam. And the things, I asked Miriam to write down things that Mira was made from. So she says the lace, oops, <clears throat> the lace on it is all vintage lace. Um, this, then she used an old sweater, um, felt, beads, ribbon, unraveled yarn, and black eyes. And I asked Mary where she got her inspiration from. And because you guys were, I mean, she doesn't have her Etsy shop up yet. And they're not sure if they're going to do an Etsy shop or if they're going to do a website. But I, I'm going to keep you posted when she decides to do this because holy freaking cow. So far, I think she's sold a couple, uh, well, quite a few maybe on Facebook. Just, but I don't think they're going to continue with the Facebook selling. And, um... So I asked Miri where she got her ideas from, and she says a lot of places. She gets them from uh, ideas from animals, ideas on Pinterest, random ideas, and by conversation. So, and then I asked, um, why do I do what I do? It's something I love, and it comes, uh, it comes naturally to me and is very relaxing. So... She'll just sit there and she'll be chatting with you and stitching up a storm. And she she really does do it naturally. And how she does this so intricately. Okay, you guys have to see the inside of this sweater. 
this coat she made. Do you see how she pieced it all together? Watson? She even made a pocket. I'm sorry, like Miriam, you? The lace on the collar, I just, oh, I can't stop. I love it all so much. She's just a genius. She really is. All of my nieces from every corner of the, all of them. I've got quite a few nieces and only a couple nephews. <laughs> But they're all so talented in so many different ways. Like her older sister Eden is amazing when it comes to drawing. And her little sister Madeline, oh my gosh, ridiculously, like scary smart. This girl is in first or second grade, but is reading at a seventh or eighth grade level. Insane. And uh, so anyway, I just really want to plug Mary's handmade dolls and I really want to encourage you guys when she's up and going um, to go on over and get your hands on them because each one is completely unique there will never be a second one like it this is the only one like this one and then each of the mermaids are their own they're all unique and they're all individual and you will never ever see the two again about that everybody uh this is now like five hours later and i have been <laughs> editing my podcast and i just realized that um it did not it, it stopped recording when i was talking about the dolls from miriam um but i will insert right here a few of the photos or i think maybe i've already done that of of like the mermaids the mermaid that she that i that I had my hands on that I could get a picture of. Uh, that's just an example of what she has to offer. So I'll keep you all posted on that. And um, besides from that, that's those are the things that I brought back with me. Um, I was going to um, do some review notes. Um, I think I'll just say it was really lovely to be home. I really had a marvelous time spending it with my family. And my friends I had a great first few days um, people at my parents house my parents and my sister and her husband they were all a little under the weather and so when I first got there and my parents thought they might go camping they ended up not going camping because they were ill so when I first got there I spent the weekend actually with my best friend and my other friends of ours um, we went to the state fair we did all the things that we've done since we were girls um, taking pictures with the giant pumpkins and cabbages and uh, we didn't ride any of the rides. I'm not really a ride person, but I am. I love them. We ate a lot of food. <laughs> it was so much fun. Oh my gosh. And the lumberjack show. This year was a tiny bit disappointing. They weren't as Skilled as they had been in the past and honest to goodness they weren't as hot looking as they were in the past but it was still a riot we had lots of fun and I mean it's free entertainment once you pay for getting in the fair so you know can't argue with that and I love how they make the little stools for the kiddos and stuff so so the lumberjack uh, show was awesome and what else did we do we just ate a lot of food <laughs> And we went into a lot of booths. We love going into all the pottery booths. My girlfriends and I usually buy at least one or two pieces of pottery per year. I think I was the only, no, one of my other friends. So two out of the four of us bought pottery that this year. I was really tempted by a yarn bowl, but then I wasn't because... It just wasn't my cup of tea. I was only tempted because it was a yarn bowl, you know? Not because it was my kind of colors and things like that, design. 
Then um, Monday I spent with my family and we, my little sister and I practiced our song that I was going to sing at grandma's funeral. And we played, <laughs> we played the train game, my new train game that I brought up with me. And then Tuesday was the funeral. So we spent the whole day either at the church um, and with the funeral, which there was a lot of laughter and a lot of tears at the funeral because that's how grandma is and that's, you know, how our whole family is. And so it was really lovely in that way. I had a really hard time. At one point, I had gone in to take a look at grandma in the casket and I just, I was completely shocked. It did not look like my grandmother. And I hated having that image in my head. And I just wanted my husband, I just wanted to bury my head in my husband's chest and he wasn't there. And I just, I, I couldn't handle it. So what I did was instead where the, all the family was gathering in the viewing room with grandma, I had gone into the sacrament room where we were going to have the services and nobody was playing the prelude music. And grandma has this thing, wherever there's a church function, there should always be prelude music. And since there wasn't, I haven't touched the ivory keys in about a year now since I was last home to get married but I just went up there and I just got out a hymnal and I just started playing hymns that grandma and I used to play together and just you know contemplating about the memories of grandma teaching me to play the piano and uh that was really lovely and then my and then we just had the services and afterwards we had um some goodies uh, and talked to a bunch of got got to catch up with a whole bunch of old family friends who had come to the services and then we went back to my parents place where we had a family gathering which we had intended to sit around sharing um, family memories about grandma but we were all having so much fun just talking in our little groups about and we were talking about grandma it just wasn't all in a big group and so hours and hours went by and all of a sudden we realized how late it had gotten and so we just were like okay well i guess we'll we'll start a google doc and start <laughs> putting in all of our memories of grandma there and then the next day we had the burial because she's buried um not next to but on top of grandpa in the uh veterans memorial park uh on elmendorf base and so um in anchorage well, Eagle River, well, Eagle River is Anchorage, whatever. Um, and so we did that. And then we um, came back. My parents and my brother and I went out to lunch. After that, it was a pretty low-key day. And then I worked that day as well. Uh, and then, uh, let's see. And then Friday came around, and that was when my parents needed to leave. But also... So my mom really wanted to play the train game. So we'd played it like four or five times by Friday. And so Friday morning, um, her, so we all made a date. My little sister, Kelsey, my older brother, Eli, my mom and I, we said, okay, 9.30 in the morning, we're gonna play the train game. And we did, we got down there at 9.30 in the morning and we start, and mom started a fire and cause it was that cold <laughs> and we just played the train game. <coughs> Pardon me. And we finished one round, which I won. I uh, always win. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, wait a minute. Kelsey won once. Might have been that time. And then we decided we wanted to play again. So then we played again. But then the problem was is that we were supposed to be at Grandma's house. We all didn't want to do this. We didn't want to go to Grandma's house. We didn't want to rifle through her things as we felt. We felt very disrespectful, but we also knew that it had to be done. It, you know, uh, we had to go through things. And we also knew that my Auntie Lane and her kids had taken the brunt of it so far. So we were going over to help out and to, you know, do, do what we could. We really didn't want to. But anyway, so we played the train game a second time. So we were late getting over there. And uh, that was probably, honestly, besides from seeing Grandma in the casket, that was actually the hardest moment for me. All of the objects, the memories that were encapsulated in Grandma's house and just reduced to, you know, things at this point. And, but then they held such memories at the same time.
So by the time I met up at the knit group that night, I was, I had a horrible headache. I was, I felt a little manic, you know, um, because I just didn't, I felt off kilter. But I had a great time at knitting group. It was really lovely. But, you know, so we just, just things like that happened. Um, it, it was just a chock full uh, time with family and friends. And I just really appreciated that time that I spent with them. And I, I really want to be home. I really want to live in Alaska. That is my home. That is my people. I feel grounded there. I feel accepted there. I feel productive there. The only problem is, is that my husband, he's too nervous about that kind of a move. We're going to have to ease into it. Um, so, you know, it might take a few years, but I still have a home up there and uh, I'll kick my tenant out anytime. <laughs> It's definitely big enough for the two of us. So, you know, Watson, that's where, that was his first home. Wasn't it, Bubba? He's totally asleep. Oh, well. But that's about it, guys. So I want to thank you all for hanging with me today and letting me join into your lives. And be looking, if you signed up for the 24 Days of Cheer swap, be looking in Ravelry and your maybe your email. I still haven't decided. <laughs> for your uh the instructions and your swappy partner and so on and so forth by the end of this weekend and remember to knit what you love and love what you knit take care <laughs>